This lesson deals with the phaser form of Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 11. Let me start by stating Kirchhoff's voltage law for phasers. The algebraic vector sum of the voltage phaser rises equals the vector sum of the voltage phaser drops around any closed path. We could do this symbolically. Suppose that the rises in voltage are V1 through V sub J. So we're going to add those phasers up and set them equal to the drops and suppose that's K through N. Now why would that be true? Well, let's go to the time domain and do the same thing. Let's take voltage V1 through V sub J. Say those are our rises in voltage, but they're now cosines as a function of time, but with different magnitudes and different angles. K through N are our drops, same thing cosine functions with different values of magnitude and angle. Okay, what is the cosine function? Well, it's the real part of our phasor notation times e to the j omega t. So let's just express this then as v1, e to the j phi1 times e to the j omega t. Do that for v2 through v sub j. Those are our rises in voltage. The drops would be v sub k, e to the j phi sub k, then e to the j omega t. And this is the real part of this, is just this expression right here. And do that through the voltage source V sub n. The example we did on page seven showed that the sum of the real parts equals the real part of the sum. So here I've got the sum of the real parts. I could write that as the sum and take the real part. But what's common to each term here is e to the j omega t. Same thing on the right-hand side of the equation where I've got the summation here of the real parts. So let's take the summation of the voltages first and then take the real part of that. Now when you compare the two equations, this is the same, and this is the same, and this is the same, and this is the same. So therefore, this quantity here has to equal this quantity. But this is our notation for the phasor voltage V1, V2, through V sub J, and on the right-hand side of the equation, V sub K through V sub N. And therefore, Kirchhoff's voltage law works for phasor voltages as well as time domain voltages. Let me state Kirchhoff's current law. The algebraic vector sum of the current phasors entering a node equals the algebraic vector sum of the current phasors leaving the node. Basically the same wording we had in the time domain, except we're replacing current by the phasor current, and then our, our sum is now a vector sum. The proof is exactly the same as the last one, it's replacing V by I. And that's the proof of Kirchhoff's current law. And these are Kirchhoff's laws in the frequency domain.